Got him. There he is. Ooh, a little spunky. What do we have here? Nice little bass there. Ooh, ah. Cool. The old 16. Ooh, he's blind and got a white pupil. There's just something about that. Just kind of dredging that crankbait along, clunking around some rock, and then boom, just stops. The rod loads up. Game on. Nice. That's a nice, healthy fish. Love it. What's cool about some of this deeper rock is electronics have become so advanced and such a big part of what a lot of guys are doing. There's still a lot of guys that don't have that advanced electronics. So if you can find that deeper rock off the bank, offshore, with electronics, a lot of times they're fish that just haven't, haven't been fished for nearly as much and they can be very willing to bite, which I don't know about you, but those are the ones I'm looking for. With a big, deep crankbait, it's kind of, you get a, I like a big, long magnum cranking rod. It's very parabolic, so it absorbs the bites, but with fluorocarbon and a big, long rod, you can really fling it down, fling it out, and get it to its maximum depth. And I'm always trying to overshoot it just a little bit. So the top of this, rock is about 14, 15 feet. So this is a DT-16. So it, for largemouth in most situations cranking, you want to hit, make contact with the bottom to cause the deflections and get those reaction bites. Um, so you overshoot the depth of your crankbait with the structure you're fishing to get as much bottom contact as you can get in a cast. That just keeps your bait in the strike zone, like paralleling a grass edge. If the bass are on the edge of the grass, you want to cast parallel and bring it and keep your bait in the strike zone versus casting perpendicular to it. So it just ups your odds. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is feel my way around. There's a kind of a rock spine that I'm trying to get that perfect cast. There he is. Another? I think I, f oh yeah. Whoa. Oh, this, is, this one feels good. This might be the right kind. Oh yeah, nice bass. Nice bass. Oh, go on, jump. There you go. Oh. A lot of wind and treble hooks make me a little rhymey. There we go. Nice. Grab some pliers. Pliers are your friend with treble hooks. <laughs> it's windy. No sense being careless. That is a nice chunky bass. Boy, he's pretty. Just grinding along in the rock. It's a really defined rock spine, which when you find that those defined spots, you know, the fish are gonna be there. They're probably not over here, over there. They're gonna be on that nice chunk rock. They're just like their buddies, the smallmouth. Largemouth love rock too. And when you can find that lineup, that's really cool. When you figure out where to keep the boat, where to cast, so your bait's just constantly digging in that rock. There's a bunch of fit, you know, it says how you're gonna find the fish. I think I may have found it, and that was two casts. I lost one and then I just caught that one, so. Now, what I like to do is just kind of pick a point. Assuming I'm locked down in my trolling motor like I am, I can pick out, say like, there's one yellow tree that's kind of by itself. That can be a reference through the pine trees or whatever it is, but it's, it's a good way to go about it. And just fire out there. And let's see if we get it down there. You kind of want to crank quick. Oh, right away. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I think they're there. I think I found a lineup. 
three and three casts. That's feeling pretty good about that. Look, another nice fish. I will take these all day long. There we go. He just nipped it right in the tail. There he is. It's like a cookie cutter of his buddy I just caught. Nice, healthy, chunky fish. Yep, nice. One nice thing, you get the wind at your back. Boy, you can cast a mile, especially with this, this crank, big old 16-foot crankbait. You can bomb it out there, and there he is. In this system, you know, I didn't have a big aggressive sweeping hook set. This is a really, really interesting system to fish a crankbait and to maximize the number of fish you're going to land. It's a nice blend of, of carbon and fiberglass, parabolic bend with the fluorocarbon, which has a lot of stretch. And having that stretch allows, make sure that you don't pull the bait right out of the fish's mouth. Say if I had braided line and a stiffer rod, I could, I would, I would feel a bite and set the hook. This is all, it's a real spongy system, which, but you can, you can feel the bottom enough and you learn what things feel with, with your crankbait. But that whole package, the long parabolic bend with the fluorocarbon is night and day. I remember the day, it was a long time ago when I first tried this system, someone had told me about it and Boy, it totally changed the number of fish I put in the boat versus the number of bites. Because you don't set the hook, you just keep reeling into them. It's kind of like a vibrating jig on the similar setup with heavier line. You just keep reeling and they, you, they just load up on the rod and they hook themselves. Of course you want sharp hooks. And fishing around rocks like I am, I mean, I'm, I'm fine for now, I would guess. But as you fish around rocks, you will dull your hooks. And when you do have a dull hook, you definitely want to replace them. And one thing that helps me with my crankbait setups is using a snap. I put a snap, there he is. Oh, <laughs> they're here. I use a snap. And what a snap does is it encourages and enables me to change colors. And even diving depths, you know, more frequently. Have been, versus having to sit down, cut your line, and retie to try another color. Having a snap just makes it so easy. And I think today I have found a pretty good color. <laughs> I don't need to change colors now, but you know what, what will happen is these fish will get tuned up. And once they get tuned up and they stop biting, say I make five or six casts without getting a bite, I could do one of two things, or both. I can change my casting angle. That's just a, a classic thing to do to, to fire up that school. I could change colors. Or one other thing that's, that's kind of a recent revelation in treble hooks is adding a bladed treble hook to the crankbait on the belly. Boy, I've seen it over and over. When the school calms down and stops biting, you can fire them up with that bladed hybrid treble. You just, you make a long cast with the wind, right on that lineup I've got, crank it down, and it's rock. So I just keep cranking, keep cranking, let it hit rocks, bang, bang, bang. It's deflecting. And as that bait, boom, it's changing direction, it looks like a bait fish is trying to escape. For this system, throwing a, you know, a 16 foot 
driver even I mean for me anything over a, a DT10 I throw I like to throw it on 12 12 pound fluorocarbon this seems to be a pretty good line you can certainly go to 10 and you could bump it up to 14 if you were throwing around a lot more cover but one thing to keep in mind the thicker the diameter of the line the shallower the bait will run even though fluorocarbon sinks the rate it sinks doesn't offset that diameter. So the thicker the line, the shallower your crankbait runs. So that's just always something to keep in mind. But most dive depths on crankbaits, certainly with Rapalus, is the dive depth that's rated on a, on a Rapala lure is based on 10 pound mono. So that's kind of a good frame of reference when you're looking at that.